What is going on guys? I hope you're all having an awesome day so far today. So today I want to go back to Revenge of the Sith. And in it, we all got the coolest fight between Master and Apprentice, Obi-Wan vs. Anakin on Mustafar. So Anakin literally met the most horrid demise that could have happened to him. As he jumped over Obi-Wan trying to mimic his master's fight with Darth Maul, he was sliced into pieces and then burst into flames next to a lava river and left to die. It doesn't really get worse than that. Many over time have commented and asked, well, why wouldn't Obi-Wan just kill him, put Anakin out of his misery? He was Obi-Wan, after all, a Jedi Master. He was merciful and followed the Jedi way. From the novel, The Rise of Darth Vader, which unfortunately is now Legends, we actually have Obi-Wan's point of view on the matter, and I think it'll leave you a little bit surprised. A flash of metal through the sky, and Obi-Wan felt the darkness closing in around them both. He knew that ship, the Chancellor's shuttle. Now, he supposed, the Emperor's shuttle. Yoda had failed. He might have died. He might have left Obi-Wan alone, the last Jedi. Below his feet, Darth Vader burst into flame. I hate you, he screamed. Obi-Wan looked down. It would be a mercy to kill him, but he was not feeling merciful. He was feeling calm and clear, and he knew that to climb down to that black beach might cost him more time than he had. Another Sith Lord approached. In the end, there was only one choice. It was a choice he had made many years before, when he had passed his trials of Jedi knighthood and sworn himself to the Jedi forever. In the end, he was still Obi-Wan Kenobi, and he was still a Jedi. And he would not murder a helpless man. He would leave it to the will of the Force. He turned and walked away. So there are a few points here that I want to cover. Obi-Wan first says that he wasn't feeling merciful, which is a pretty out of character thing to say for Obi-Wan, as Anakin just lay there screaming in pain as he burnt alive in pieces. However, he also wasn't feeling merciful when Maul killed Qui-Gon. So in Obi-Wan's case, for Anakin, he did just burn down the whole Jedi Order and kill younglings, so I can kind of see where Obi-Wan was coming from at that time. Not to mention, Anakin was trying to kill him just the same. The second thing that I'd like to talk about is how he said he would leave it to the will of the Force. Now, this right here, I loved. This is Qui-Gon's teachings. Qui-Gon was always the one who thought things happened for a divine reason, or would happen as a result of the living Force. He thought meeting Anakin wasn't just by chance, but rather the will of the Force. Basically saying whatever is destiny will be so. That part made me smile, because it was just a little nod towards his dead master, who perhaps, and this is just my theory, was there during the fight, only invisible. Now, I wouldn't be surprised, as Qui-Gon has visited Obi-Wan in canon, as well as seeing Anakin slaughtering the Sand People, which we heard in Attack of the Clones. We may just get Disney to go back to the prequels, which would be really cool, but hard to believe, and add some things in here and there. Who knows what they might do next, or in the future. Now, they have started going back to the originals in their new cartoon, Forces of Destiny, which they have Mark Hamill reprising his role as Luke through voice acting, of course, which I actually really liked. Now, in another video, I want to cover Obi-Wan's time on Tatooine. He obviously had lots of time to think on things, and one of the main questions that haunted him every night is revealed in the book The Rise and Fall of Darth Vader, which is a completely different book than the one I just mentioned. The thing that haunted him was whether or not he should have let Anakin die there or take him back and try to turn him to the light again. More about that in another video, however, the fact that Obi-Wan wasn't feeling merciful in this one was pretty surprising for me to read. But as he began to calm down, which makes me wonder if he used any of the dark side in his duel or not, was that he realized he was still Obi-Wan Kenobi. He was still a Jedi, and he would not murder a helpless man. Anakin laying there burnt to a crisp was more helpless than anything, and as soon as Obi-Wan saw the ship pass over his head, he knew that even contemplating the thought would leave him and Padme dead, as he was no match for Sidious. He had to get Padme to medical help, and to find Yoda if he were still alive, and that's where the part of the novel leads to, in which we all know the rest. So let me know guys, do you think it's cool that Obi-Wan was feeling merciless, or do you find it a bit out of character? Do you think Qui-Gon was actually there with him, and influenced him to let Anakin's fate be the will of the Force, or was it just his old master rubbing off on him? Sound off below, and I will see you all in the next episode of Star Wars Theory. Until then, my fellow Jedi and Sith friends, remember, the Force will be with you. Always. Oh.